Hey, what's up guys, this is Val. Welcome to Off-Camera Shadows. I'm gonna be talking about how off-camera shadows can really enhance your work, make it look more intriguing, um, interesting, professional, and also how, they, how shadows really can beautify your renders. So here is a common thing we face as artists. We have this beautiful set by Stonemason Streets of Asia 2, and we add some sunlight, and there is a lot of emptiness in the area, in the set. And nothing wrong with that per se, but you know, large areas tend to steal a lot of attention, right? Especially if they are unattended to. And so one thing you can do is obviously to just reposition the sun, right? So we can go and lower the sunshine. For instance, use um, 17 as time. And we can then also rotate the dome, which is gonna be dome rotation, all right. And we can enter, let's say 90, the other way. All right, that will make the set cast some shadows on it, make it a little more interesting, fill out the void, so to speak, and make it a little more interesting. This is although a little bit limited because you cannot, you know, there is only so much you can do with your set and so forth. Um, and also it's kind of limited. It, you cannot choose exactly what you're casting here. You're using the available geometry of the set here to um, cast shadows, right? So another thing you can do, which is quite cool, let me just um, reposition the sun. Let's choose a different time, let's do 16. So another thing you can do is, let's pick one rotation that adds a little bit of shade. Let's lower the sun some more, which is maybe 1800. And then we're gonna go to, yeah. Yeah, something like that, right? So one thing you can do now is to, let's go to 300. 30. There we go. Is to use the available geometry. Like for instance, this building over here, I have it already pre selected. It's over here, right? You can use it to cast shadows onto your set. And the way this works is you got simply select it in your scene and you raise it off the ground. Um, by doing so, you are forcing this huge building to act as a shadow caster and right and the issue you're having here immediately is that you don't really know where it is and you can of course squeeze it a little bit and move it onto to a different location right and really picture well where can i move this to in order for the shadows to be present in my scene. And you can move it to the side, you can move it up a little bit, and eventually you will cast some shadows onto your set. As you can see, and it will start filling the entire set with shadows. This is a cool way, cool trick of doing that, but it's limited because you only have what you have in your scene. Sometimes you don't even have that. And also it's using a lot of geometry. And normally I say, you know, when things are off camera, when you don't see them, get rid of them because they will speed up your rendering and all the flow and all that, right? So it's, it's cool. It is something you can use, but it will add to your rendering time because you're using geometry here. I would normally just remove uh, to speed up the rendering, right? Now, yet another way which is really how the pros do it, is to, let me just remove, get rid of that building we just entered here, just uh, get it back to its default position. Uh, another cool trick which professional artists use is to use off-camera shadows by a plate, using a plate. So I'm gonna create a plane. Let's just make it 10 meters in size. And upon entering our scene, it ends up over here. So what I'm gonna do is click on it and rotate it on the X, sorry, rotation, so that it stands up, right? Now, immediately when it stands up, 
I'm going to go to Plane, Surfaces, and in here, add just a preset so that it's a array, an array um, surface, right? Now, you can add a pattern to this as of now. And really, you don't want it to catch any light, so you can drag this down. Any glossiness you can turn off. This is basically going to be a blackened item. And you don't want to catch any reflections either, so remove any reflections whatsoever. And on the opacity um, channel, which is called cutoff opacity right here, you can add a texture. And if you don't have any textures, you can go online, search for black and white pattern, black and white shadow, um, black and white tree or whatever, black tree on white, some kind of image you can apply. You can also see if any available textures, like from this prop, for instance, there's a lot of textures here, right? Some of them might be usable, usable for this, um, some might not. So for instance, this is a map of a something on the ground that might be used as a shadow casting item. You can see that it's a bit of noise in there or grungy looking texture, right? But really what you want here is more defined, a solid object. So let's go online. So here we are at pixabay.com, great place for free photos, even for commercial projects. And you can now just enter, for instance, tree um, shadow and just enter and look for it. And in some cases, you will find something you can use, like for instance, portions of this image could be used as something like that. Sometimes you will find a more um, better stuff, like you can use, just search for PNG or alpha. In this case, it didn't find anything. Let me just use alpha. All right, here is a black and white figure. And you can use those to um, create shadows. All right. So let's just have some fun with this and use this one as a shadow caster. And I'm just going to download this. And I'm just going to save it here to my um, um, folder. And inside Photoshop, I'm just going to open this up and make sure it's saved. I'm just going to flatten the image to make the background pure white. And then I'm going to invert it. Inside our studio, white is solid, opaque, and black is transparent. This is what you want as a shadow casting map, all right? Then I'm going to save it. And I'm just going to use JPEG for this. Uh, JPEG. Let me just adjust so we can see what I'm doing. And uh, save. Maximum quality. All right, so back inside our studio, I can now apply this texture we just created into the cutout opacity channel browse and just simply load it here all right that now creates a solid cutout object it's upside down doesn't really matter what you already can see is that it, it is indeed casting shadows right so all you need to do now is move it away from away from the camera it's called an off camera shadow caster right now that it's outside, it's already casting shadows, as you can see, and you can now raise it off the ground and paint your scene with shadows, right? Exactly say, hey, I want the shadows to go here and here by simply modifying and moving this item. And you can obviously rotate it. I'm not going to do that right now, but you can rotate it, you can scale it, you know, and adjust it all the way you want to create different types of effects and so forth. And literally add beautifying shadows all over your scene. So it's it's kind of, you know, you have a lot of options to go with. And if you want more professional and quick results, I've also made a complete set, which is out of desk right now. And so it's called Off Camera Shadows. And really what it does, it casts beautifully designed shadows, as you can see, uh, onto your sets pretty much immediately. This is with and without. See on this uh, rock here, beautiful shadows. This Streets of Asia 2 set, the exact same scene we just were you know, visiting. You can cast beautifully designed tree shadows, industrial shadows, uh, city shadows with different you know, um, 
softness effects and these are pre-made I will just instantly you know, remove all the void in your render and make your renders look more interesting with and without with and without again and like I said there's different options you got palm trees large small industrial large small uh, city big small and trees normal trees big and small and there's also how it wraps around your scene so this will just save you time give you professional design options to go with the flow and you also got intensity adjustments color and all that and sharpness icons so if I were just to you know use this set let me just show you here more precisely this area over here which is quite empty without the shadows uh, what I can do is remove our shadow casting plane we just did and just load this set so I'm gonna load and here and just quickly adjust it I'm gonna go to as you can see it immediately populates your scene and depending on how your scene is rotated it will obviously you know uh, populate your scene with the, these dark shadows and, and icons or uh, solid items right but look at the ground now it just looks pretty amazing right so these are professional designs so they will look just awesome and there's obviously you know stuff you can do here to control it you can raise them off the ground as far as height goes you can rotate them um, here for instance to 160 you can scale them and all that and they will just instantly add beautiful beautifully designed shadows to your render and you have full control of them you can move them you can change the sharpness so for instance you can go in here and say hey I want to have um, sharpness full so click on that it will instantly make the shadows sharp you can have a much softer effect if you want or something in between this is instant changes um, by the way, you can also go in here and do, for instance, change. Hey, I want to have some kind of industrial uh, look and feel. So you can just go ahead and select this area over here and uh, go back and choose industrial. I will instantly, you know, cast different type of shadows. In this case, it's industrial. That can cover your scene entirely if you want to. So that you can have streams of light or you can have a smaller effect if that's what you want all right it will have these beautifully designed grids of light throughout your scene and also by default the ground is on depending on if you have a set or not so we can just turn it off if that's interfering with your real scene and you have these it's kind of like it does two things for you or three actually it's it helps you to Add these beautifully designed um, shadows all together, right? These are professional designs, so they would just look amazing. And it, you know, helps you to block off lighting. As you can see, it's part, portions of the scene become darker because the set really goes. It's black here, right? So it blackens some portions of your scene and makes the available light more co contrast-rich or focused and also it saves you time right because these are pre-designs we just load them rotate them into place and it's there so guys that's pretty much it if you think this is cool check out the product with the link below and uh, again thanks so much for watching if you like the video comment below and share with your friends so all i have to say now is have fun with shadows and i'll see you next time